People who take walks at night. What's the scariest thing you've seen? Here is where artificial intelligence meets the best and worst of humankind. If true stories and confessions about the creepy, dark and mysterious fascinate you, you found the best place where they are shared with fleeky visuals and artificial love. So if you like this type of content, make sure to invite the like button to go on a camping trip. But when you're deep in the wild and supposed to be sleeping in your tent, pack all essentials and silently go back, leaving it alone in the wilderness. So, people who take walks at night, what's the scariest thing you've seen? Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. This content might be disturbing to snowflakes. During winter in a rural no cell service kind of area. There was complete darkness, no street lights nor anyone in sight. Temperatures were around 20 and it was snowing. I was walking my dog with a flashlight. Then I heard someone start screaming bloody murder. Flight or fight kicked in, it truly sounded like someone was being jabbed into the afterlife, for what seemed like forever. I expected to get in the crosshairs or witness some bloody domestic fight, propelling me into a terrifying headspace. I chose to find out what the hell was going on. What I found instead, was beyond anything I expected. It was a five-year-old boy, wandering down the road all alone. All he was wearing were light flannel pants and a thin t-shirt. No shoes or hat. He was screaming so loudly, it echoed through the hills. I dropped my dog's leash and walked up to him slowly, gently and repeatedly telling him that I'm a mom and that he's going to be okay. I wrapped him into my arms and carried him to a neighbor's home to warm him by the fire and call for help. Apparently, the boy's parents were visiting friends. The boy got up in the middle of the night and started looking for his parents, who left him and his sister home, while they were out drinking. He got lost in the dark and just kept walking and screaming. He was so lucky to have been found, there was another story a few winters back, where a two-year-old girl got out at night in their new house. Just started learning how to unlock doors. And she didn't know how to get back inside. A neighbor thought they heard crying and regretted not investigating further. The girl froze to her last breath on the stairs behind their apartment. Grew up in Japan, in a smaller city. Worked a job that had me coming home daily at 4 a.m. I preferred to walk the back street that paralleled the main street home, because it felt more cozy and peaceful. Nothing of note happened until one day. I turned the corner onto the side street and about halfway down there was a young woman. She wasn't doing anything, just staring at the sky. Staring straight up. Straight up, neck at a 90 degree angle, mouth slightly agape, long black hair hanging. I hesitated but decided that, since nothing weird has ever happened here before, it'd be fine, so I went to walk by. I get up next to her, it's a narrow road so not a lot of room to maneuver, and pause to look at her. She hasn't moved or reacted to me, she's just staring away. So I fight my instincts and ask her if she's okay. She doesn't react. I look up to see if she's looking at something, but there's nothing there. So now I'm thinking there's something medical going on, so I reach out and touch her on the shoulder. She jolts and looks at me like she just noticed me. I ask if she's okay and she just stammers and says, Oh, sorry. Before hustling down the street the same way I was headed. I decided to smoke a cigarette to let some distance get between me and her, but towards the end of the street, she stops and stares at the sky again. Doesn't move for the whole five minutes it takes for me to finish my cig. I walk down the main street for the next couple nights. One time I turned around to see what was behind me just out of intuition, and I saw someone step behind a tree rather quickly and try to hide from me. I stood there for a second to confirm this, then I Usain bolted home. Freaking creepy. I worked night shift for 7 years. One night a young, thin blonde woman was walking down the street at 2am, with no pants or underwear and a button-up shirt open. I tried to ask if she needed help and she just stared forward, slowly walking staring forward. I called the police, they came and stood in front of her and she slowly walked into the cop's hand and stopped. I didn't stay and went back to work. I still think about her and what the hell was going on. I tell myself she was probably sleepwalking on Ambien or something, and that she wasn't just attacked and in complete shock. I'll never know. But she was very pretty, and seemed well groomed. Very strange. A seven feet tall male brown kangaroo in the middle of the footpath. Buff as frick, just staring me down. 
You bet your ass I turned and went the other way, he just went about his business. There was a news report a while ago, about a super large and buff kangaroo that would beat up dog walkers. But if you think kangaroos are intimidating, wait till you see our large birds. I have seen a cassowary in the wild. These things are killing machines, they can take a man's throat out with one kick. I've also had a mob of approximately 70 emus running towards me on my grandfather's farming property. They turned away when they realized I was there, but 70 of these animals coming your direction is pretty freaking incredible. I'm so lucky to have seen that. I worked night shift on Kadena in Okinawa, Japan. I started walking to work, because I didn't have a car. I really enjoyed the walks. It was a good way to wind down after work as the nights were cool and quiet, and I could listen to my music without worrying about anyone else around. One night while walking, I heard some rustling in the jungle of trees on the way home. Next thing I know, all of the lights went black and all I heard and felt was a loud whoosh coming right at my head. I screamed like a little girl, ran, and dropped my iPod. It broke. Once I made it past the trees, I realized it was one of the giant bats that lived on Okinawa. It scared the ever-living doo-doo out of me. An old man who walked very aggressively. Like Jason from Friday the 13th but sped up. I was ready to run, but I walked past him and nothing happened. Put me on my toes but holy crap change your walking form man. Maybe he's just built different, or he probably figured power walking at night was a way to avoid people. I was 22 when I found the guy in a high traffic area. I was the only one to stop. I yelled at him but noticed his stomach wasn't moving and he had pale skin. Called 911. The detectives questioned me and it took 6 hours to clear the scene. They detained me the whole time before they allowed me to go. I experienced a similar story. I was walking home fairly drunk from a late night party and found a girl that had bloodied wrists in the park by my house. She was on the ground by a bench, assuming she was drunk I stopped to see if she was okay, then I saw the blood. She was unresponsive but still alive. At first I thought she had been beaten or something, but while I was on the phone with 911, I realized it was her wrists, her face was messed up too but, I think that was from falling off the bench. EMT and police showed up asked me a few questions. Took my info and sent me home. I never heard anything so I assume she lived. Scariest night of my life. Almost 100% sure I witnessed a kidnapping. I was going to get my mail late at night while living in an apartment complex. On the way back, I noticed a woman in her pajamas surrounded by a few men right by a car. There was an argument and it looked like they forced her in the car and drove off. I found her slipper nearby on the grass. I of course, called the police and they came and I let them know what I saw, but I never found out what actually happened. Similar experience here. In high school, late at night walking home from a friend's house maybe a mile away. A car comes cruising super slowly down the street. I hear someone screaming in the car. I was sure they were calling for help. I start following the car, and as I get on the phone with the cops the car starts pumping the gas, so I just run after them and try to follow them, but I lost them pretty quickly. Never learned what really happened. This sort of reminds me of the time my family and I went on a three-day road trip in the summer. When we got back to our house, we noticed that there was a woman's small purse and other belongings, like makeup and some other things, strewn about our backyard. There was also a wallet with an ID. We called the cops and they came and gathered everything up, then left. Never found out who it was or what happened, but it was kind of scary to know that while we were gone, a woman could have been assaulted in our backyard. She looked quite young too. I was walking around Bangalore, India at night by myself. I was a 20-year-old American girl on study abroad. All of a sudden, I saw a giant rat climb out from a sewer. It was bigger than I knew rats could even be. Bigger than the biggest rat depicted in movies or books. It was about the size of a small dog. I was shook. Then, out from the same sewer grate, another gigantic rat. And another, and another. About five or six dirty rats, were all climbing out of the same sewer and I was about to have to face them all on my own. I was terrified, and I knew no one would ever believe me, but there was no way to get away from them or change direction. So, I pull out my phone to try and use the flashlight to scare them off. I direct the light at them and every single one looked right at me. They're dark and dirty and now they were running directly at me. But I was wrong. 
puppies. They weren't rats at all, but a whole litter of dirty puppies that had been hiding in the sewer together. Still gross, but also way cuter and less scary than expected. What the hell India? A couple years ago, I was at the start of a typical weekday night stroll. I was living in an apartment complex in Florida at the time, so it was the only opportune time to do so, without being completely drenched. The exact moment I was crossing the sidewalk adjacent to the entrance of said complex, I witnessed a middle-aged dude punch his wife in her face, in full view of me, and another passerby. The passerby called the cops, the dude was arrested. It wasn't a scary situation to my own well-being, but I did find the situation chilling for one, how nonchalant the guy was in hitting his wife in public, and two, how both the abuser and wife were pleading for the cops not to be called. It was domestic abuse so normalized, it happened in full public, without any second thought. I was jogging at night once and it was pretty dark in my neighborhood. I prefer jogging at night, because it is much cooler. I'm right in the grove and a tiny woman with a miniature Doberman pincher on a leash freaked me out. They were both so small I didn't even see them until I was running right past them. Just picture a 6 feet 3 inches stocky big guy being startled by a 5 feet 0 inches woman with an ankle biter dog. More backpacking than a walk, but this freaking terrifies me to this day. Our planned camping spot for the night was full, we'd backpacked all day to get to that location and there wasn't anywhere close to set up our tents. We called our guy on the outside to come pick us up as it was getting late, we didn't have anywhere to set up camp, and a storm was approaching. We hiked to the nearest exit point on the trail, met our pickup guy, and he drove us a few miles to the nearest campsite we were familiar with, that we could basically drive up to. Long logging path pretty deep in the mountains that we had hiked to in previous years, so we were kind of familiar with the area. Anyways, we hop out of the van and it's pitch black out. No moon, it's April in the mountains and still pretty chilly. We're cold, hungry, and exhausted. That's when we notice this creep staring at us from behind a tree. I know this sounds like a nightmare fuel story, but it's 100% true and probably the most scared I've ever been. We notice this guy, no headlamp, no equipment, no backpack, just standing there. One of our group, former Marine, yells at him to come out and explain what his deal is. This guy walks a few feet out from behind the tree and we all shine our lights on him, and I shit you not, this dude's white t-shirt is covered in what looks like blood smears. He's pretty rough looking, long hair, long beard, crazy eyes, and he was wearing a red smeared t-shirt and shorts in 35 degree weather at night. We're all pretty freaked out, and this is a pretty experienced group of hikers who've seen some crap. We ask this guy what his deal is and he says we can't camp here. We tell him that that's exactly what we plan to do. And he says. I don't think, that's a good idea for any of you. We kind of turn to discuss as a group and when we look back he's hidden back behind the tree. As a group we basically decided none of us were getting any sleep that night if we stayed here, so we packed up the van and left. As we were pulling out, this guy pulled out one of those red filtered flashlights and ran after our van. I'm not kidding, he followed us for at least a quarter mile on foot. He was fast as frick. We passed a park ranger on the road and flagged him down to tell him how weird that dude was acting, and he said he'd go investigate. I didn't hear anything about it again for five years. For the longest time I thought he was probably some pot farmer who had a nearby plot, or a moonshiner who was just living in the woods and didn't want us near his still. People hunt all the time out there, which would maybe explain the blood a little bit. But I was recently at an event with some of those guys again, for the first time in years and that creepy dude from the woods got brought up. One of them who still lives nearby pulled out his phone and said, I forgot to tell you guys, I saw him again. Pulls up a news article and there he was. So obviously the same guy. He'd been arrested for murdering some poor girl on the trail. Timelines didn't match up, so I fully believe we saw this guy shortly after he did the same to someone else. He hasn't been charged with anything else as far as I'm aware. I'm not backpacking without a gun anymore. Living in a rural village, I was taking a late night walk with my girlfriend, when suddenly we hear aloud what we thought was a human scream. Turned out as was a sheep, jump scared us hard though. I am male and used to walk home after a night out drinking. I had long hair and was quite skinny when I was in my early 20s, so one time at about 2am, in a dark location, 
I was walking home and some guy slows his car right down and drives next to me staring. I told him to frick off and at that point, I think he realized I was a man and drove off. I am pretty sure if I had been a woman things wouldn't have ended up well. Many years ago, my boyfriend and I decided to take a late night walk around his generally safe neighborhood. We got a few steps past the driveway when a shirtless guy came running over with a hammer in one hand and a machete in the other. My boyfriend stayed super calm and asked the man what was going on. Apparently, some man had just broken into his apartment and tried to kidnap his young daughter, so he was chasing him down to either flatten his fingers with a hammer or go mayhem with a machete, and he thought my boyfriend was possibly this man. My boyfriend gave me his car keys and told me to take myself home. So I went and got his car and by the time I was backing out of the driveway, the man was screaming at my boyfriend, who was just standing there calmly with his hands in the air. The machete man ended up running off and I don't know if they ever got him. My boyfriend was fine though, thank god. I've witnessed this super calm approach, my brother-in-law was bailed up by a crazy dude on drugs who was literally punching random strangers. My brother-in-law just stayed completely calm, raised his hands just a little to show his palms, and said, I've got no problem with you, and the guy paused, said cheers, and ran over and punched someone else. I'd heard this works, but never seen it so effective. One time, I was walking around my relatively safe neighborhood with two of my friends after midnight, we were probably 16 at the time. This loud red truck speeds by us, which is normal for the road we were on. Then a few minutes later the same red truck drives by the opposite way going much slower. Again just a couple of minutes later, he drives by but this time stops a hundred or so feet away from us and just sits there. Realizing that this is not normal we booked it through the yard to the next street over. For the next 20 minutes or so, we see this truck creeping up and down the neighborhood while we hid behind some bushes and when we finally thought he was gone, we booked it to my house. He turned the corner onto my road just as we were about to open my front door. Totally understand that you were kids, it was late and it happened a while ago, but for anyone reading, if you think you're being followed, do not lead them back to your home. Find a well-lit, public place as soon as possible and contact the police. Seeing is scary, but hearing and not seeing is freaking terrifying. Also proves that nothing is scarier than the human imagination. If there isn't a monster there, give your brain a few seconds and it'll make one. A good example of hearing something in the dark that is terrifying, is the sound of a rabbit screaming while you hear the low growling of either a raccoon or a cougar, trying to silence it. I hope it wasn't the latter, because this happened right near my backyard. I experienced the same, but it was an owl shredding a rabbit. I did not expect it to be such a big bird. It was like a fire hydrant covered with feathers sitting there munching on thumper. I saw a tarantula use a crosswalk as if it was a law-abiding pedestrian. The dude was just trying to be a good example for the other spiders. Friendly neighborhood spider. Had a similar experience with a fox, I was on a very long footbridge over a river in the heart of a large city, taking night skyline shots and dude just trotted by like it was no big deal. I saw two deer fighting, then yelling at each other, then having sexy time. It was an adventure in a few words. Just like married couples. I'm an overnight security guard. One night I was watching cameras and saw someone underneath a grass tarp where some landscaping was taking place on our property. I was guessing this person had probably tried to stash something before they went into detox, which is next door to our property. I get over to the tarp and don't see the guy anywhere. So I start walking over the tarp and lifting it to look for any stashed items. Well I ended up stepping on the poor homeless guy. Scared the doo-doo out of me. He was cool though. And we fist bumped and he went on his way. A corpse on the side of the street with a sign around its neck saying, I'm a cell phone thief, don't be like me. This was maybe 20 years ago in Manila, Philippines. Happened to my grandfather too, he was walking our dog at 5 am, dog went to do his business near a dark, grassy empty lot and they found a body bound up with a sign on him saying he was a thief. This practice is called salvage in the Philippines. Basically an extrajudicial taking of life done by policemen or vigilantes on criminals and drug addicts, or suspected criminals. It's basically been going on way before Duterte took office, but it's only with him it was somewhat institutionalized and blatant. Before that, the police didn't brandish it with so much impunity, and didn't dare target teens or grandmothers. 
Nowadays most of the poor are fair game, if you have money and connections you can still buy your way out of things. Iguana fell out of a tree on an unseasonably cool night. So, in the winter months when we get cold fronts, the damn things go into a low power mode kind of stasis, and fall out of the trees. They're usually fine unless a car runs them over, once it warms up they go back to normal. A man on a bike passed me and he wore a jacket, shoes, and a hat, but no pants or underwear. At first I couldn't believe that I just saw his bare booty. So it's safe to say I saw two moons that night. I live out in the country, more woods and fields around me than houses. There are several dirt paths through the woods that farmers use for their tractors and all during the day. I like to run on these paths, because it's usually quiet and no traffic unlike the road. During the hottest part of the summer I run at night because it's cooler outside. So one night, it had rained during the day, so all the tracks on the path were gone. I was out running around midnight. I had an uneasy feeling, but didn't see anything. But then I circled around and on my second pass down a particular way, I saw my footprints, but then I saw another set of prints, bigger than mine, that hadn't been there before. Then I saw they made the turn the same way I had earlier. I cut it short that night, never saw anyone, but still. My dad was a retired cop turned social worker, very good at diffusing dangerous situations, so when a dude confronts us with a pistol and demand my dad's money he was very calm. Then he frowned, squinted at the gun and exclaims in an indignant voice, did you spray paint a goddamn water pistol? The dude literally blusters a corny. No no. It's real. My dad says, I can still smell the damn paint fumes, dumbass. Get the hell out of here, be glad I'm not calling the cops. One of the most bizarrely amusing things that ever happened to us when I was with him on an evening outing. Was up on a hill in the countryside at midnight, when a man with a rifle came out of nowhere, ran right past me, and wasn't seen again. I went home shortly after that. Damn these civil war ghosts always running around. I'll walk my dog at night and wear an LED headlamp, mostly so I can see any bare eyes glowing back at me. 20 feet down the ravine, about half mile from home one night, there were approximately 30 rabbits eyes glowing and blinking back at me. Couldn't see the rabbits due to undergrowth, but the eyes. Not gonna lie, it got under my skin. Walking home from a late night gym session at 24 hours fitness. A white van passed by me, slowing down. Slowly took a right turn in front of me. A couple minutes later I reached the turn and see the van stopped at the exit of a parking lot. It's facing back my way. It's like 4 am and nothing else is going on and I'm creeped out. The van starts coasting forward slowly after I make the turn and I sprint across the street to a gas station and into this small dead end water slash air pump station. I press my body against an area of the wall that the van can't quite see me. It literally pulls into the station and stops. I hear the engine running right fucking next to me, but they never get out of the van. I just stand there pressed against the wall until they pull out and drive around the gas station into the lot on the opposite side of the wall. I hear the van lingering for some time before it goes silent. Still, I wait a while longer before I leave and run the rest of the way home. I've never been afraid of the dark. Grew up in the countryside, where the nearest streetlight was 10 miles away, so I'm comfortable in dark places. So much so, that I often take my dog for a walk at around midnight just because I like the peace and quiet of the night. I live in a city now, so something about the dark is just soothing to me. That being said, one of the scariest things I've ever experienced, I genuinely have no explanation for. Living in a city I used to drive out 20 to 30 miles into the country to do some astrophotography. As I'm driving out one night, I see this guy walking at the side of the road with no lights, reflectors and a big backpack. Didn't think much of it other than it being a little odd. Five miles later, I see the same guy walking again. I haven't changed directions, and I've been doing around 50 miles per hour. As I drove past he looked and waved at me. I was pretty spooked but I drove on. I must be imagining things. It can't be the same guy. I get to my field in the middle of nowhere, park up and get the camera out, and turn off all the lights so my eyes adjust to the dark. All is going well and for 30 minutes I'm content, and starting to relax. Suddenly I hear a rustling near the hedge by the road. Crunching leaves, grass being kicked. It was footsteps. I immediately get a feeling of dread, 
like I'm in severe danger and something bad was going to happen. I grab my camera, toss it in the car, get in, lock the doors and turn on the headlights. When I turn out of the field, I pass where I heard the noise and saw fresh footprints and the mud but no sign of anyone. I race back home, driving double the speed limit, constantly checking my mirrors for anyone. I park up around the corner and wait in the car with the lights off for 30 minutes, watching. Nothing shows up, I get home, lock all the doors and sleep with a knife under my pillow that night. I honestly don't know what really happened that night. But part of me knows that creepy guy I passed on the road twice, was in that field. As someone who used to make sure trains had an adequate coating of paint, I spent a good amount of time walking around the rougher sides of town at night. Worst thing I ever saw was in Seattle, was walking down the street under an overpass in an industrial district, and a homeless woman asked if I could buy her a beer since she didn't have an ID. Bought her a 40, talked to her about her daughters, watched her getting blitzed, all in about two minutes. She started reading to me from a lightly singed Bible, about the devil specifically, at which point I was looking for a quick and polite exit. At which point three men rode by with a gallon jug, and doused her tend in something, maybe gasoline, perhaps turpentine or kerosene, really didn't stick around to find out. Lit her tent on fire. She ran into the burning tent. I'll never forget watching her run out screaming and crying, holding a duffel bag, her white coat completely engulfed in flames. I took off running, since the guys on bikes didn't look thrilled to see me, called SPD, but they didn't seem to care much after I told them what part I saw this happen in. Hit amongst the trains for a few hours after that. Out of curiosity for the situation, I took a picture while she was reading from the Bible because I thought, no way my friends will believe someone was street preaching to me. This was the picture I made. Over 25 years ago, I was walking in a park at night. It was pitch black in this park, no lighting, other than the moon and the stars on a beautiful autumn night. I couldn't see very well, but I knew the area and was walking along the road, which ran parallel to a small river. The moonlight would bounce of the water, and all you would hear is the trickle from the slow running river and slight breeze in the trees. I loved those walks. That was until the one night. In the dead silence and pitch black, I distinctly hear a man's voice out of the woods say very clearly. Young girls shouldn't go walking alone in the woods at night. I froze. I looked in the direction of the voice and couldn't see a damn thing. I ran home. That was the last evening walk I took in that park. The following story is an exclusive for viewers of this channel. It is something I actually experienced myself, and I want to share it with you, my loyal viewer, in memory of my loyal dog. This happened in my late teens, I had a shepherd dog that would join me on extra long distance hikes. His name was Rex. I live close to a big forest and a river that runs through the country, the Netherlands. This one time, I decided to take another route, through a less known area with a bit of farmland connected to it. So I wanted to walk all the way through the forest, reach the river and walk back through the forest. The walk took much longer than I expected, so before reaching the river, it was already dark out. I'm talking pure darkness, almost being able to see stars if the trees weren't covering them up so much. I continued the walk because I grew up in the region and Rex accompanied me, so I felt safe to keep going. Let me add I would tell myself regularly that, I'm no quitter, during my late teens. After a while, with my eyes gradually adjusting to the dark. The silence of the night in the woods was abruptly taken over by increasing noises of moving leaves, crushing branches as if it was moving towards me. When I stopped to check out what it was, I saw at least 12 pairs of moon yellow flickering eyes staring at me, all from the same line of distance. The sound stopped and they just stared, as if they were all held up by a line or something, which made it more creepy. Rex wasn't scared or interested at all, so I tried to take my time to see what it was. I saw there were like 20 pairs of eyes, looking my way. When looking more closely, I saw it was cows. Actual cows, being held back by the fence that was covered in leaves. It felt eerie and it struck me how interested they seemed in me, during that night. But cows be cows. If I would keep on going, they couldn't continue their creepy paparazzi urges because of the fence holding them back anyway. I simply decide to continue my walk to the river. So, happy to leave the creepy cows behind and feel a small piece of accomplishment for continuing what I set out to do. 
I embrace the silence of the woods once again, while listening to my dog's paws softly sweeping through the expanding thickness of the forest grounds. Almost reaching the river, knowing I have to walk one more miles or so. I'm already staring into the distance, trying to see the moonlight bouncing of the river water through the trees. But looking into the darkness, I notice something strange, around 50 feet into the forest at my right side. That's like 15 meters. I saw a very recognizable type of light, being pointed towards the ground. The white cold LED light that is usually produced by smartphones. I could only see the light being pointed down while some person, it seemed, was going through a specific area and organic debris. Rex noticed too and immediately growled loudly. This aggressive sound was surely heard and must have startled the person, because the light went off and all went silent. Wanting to stay in control, I instinctively put my dog back on the leash at that instant. Not wanting trouble or any contact for that matter. I just decided to walk towards the river, feeling a more open space would be better to walk towards. During this walk my heart raced and I began thinking about what just happened. I have to explain, that the path I was walking on wasn't really made for pedestrians, but it was accessible to hikers that like to go deeper, it would be more natural to walk where I walked. But deeper into the woods, into the location of the light, it wasn't normal to be so far into the bushes. Especially at night. Being a bit of a newer area to me, I was also doubting if it was illegal to. You see, we have areas that are protected so wildlife and fauna can prosper. But I shrugged it off and refocused my thoughts and efforts into reaching the river, but doing so in a much faster pace. While walking at a brisk pace and occasionally pulling on the leash, for Rex to join my direction, I heard the bushes being disturbed behind us, as if someone was exiting the bushes. I have to say that I didn't feel followed or in real danger. This person from the light didn't know which side I was going, his or her eyes were fixated on the light and he or she must have panicked when my dog's growl traveled through the trees. So when I almost reached the moonlight of the river, I could see a bit into the path we came from. Curiously looking back for some times, I saw a silhouette of a face and shoulder, charging down the same path towards us. It was some 200 feet or 30 meters away. It looked like a tall man. At that moment I stopped vibing with my ego, and went with my gut feeling. We started walking back, away from the riverside, the same path as we came from, the same path the figure was coming from. So we would have to pass each other. When I re-entered the path purposely loud, I saw the silhouette freeze. As if he was startled by us and had to process the situation. This freeze evolved into some movements, but it couldn't alarm me more than I already was. I knew that he must have known I saw him, but I didn't know what he was doing so far and secretly in the woods. I just hoped he would understand that we shared a need. A need for minding our own business, and just keep going our own separate ways. I kept walking towards him, as if I was on my easy Sunday walk, being chaperoned by my loyal shepherd. Willing to drive his teeth into anyone who's willing to harm me. The area surrounding us grew darker as I reached him. It was noticeable he walked way slower. As if he was trying to refrain himself from walking too fast into the moonlight, that was bouncing from the river into the forest. But just some moments before I could actually make eye contact, size him up, or even see any features, I was suddenly greeted with a blinding LED light straight into my face. I raised my hand, squeezing the leash in my other and yelled, Hey! While my dog immediately answered with a deep growl. He passed us, blasting his light into our direction, followed by the sound of a grown man going into a full sprint away from us. After the 15 or 20 seconds it took for me to regain proper eyesight, I couldn't see the man, just hear him running in the far distance towards the river. For Rex, he didn't seem to mind to skip playing in the water this time. I still believe things could have ended different if he wasn't there next to me. I didn't feel the need to contact police, since nothing really dangerous happened. One thing is for sure, he didn't want me to see his facial features, or what he was doing in the bushes. He went walking towards the river, making me think he assumed he would have a higher chance to avoid walking into me and Rex. I'm just glad we had an agreement to keep to ourselves that night, but that night did hurt my ego, for we didn't reach the river all the way. Later, a family member laughed when I told him about the cow part, saying, those cows are always more social when it's dark out, but don't forget cows kill more people than sharks each year. Real funny. Thank you for enjoying this episode, which was made with artificial love. Subscribe to receive future episodes, and tickle the like button for good karma. Do you have any experiences surrounding this topic? Share yours below, I'll join the conversation. And I'll be seeing you, in the next one.